Greetings, friends. Slow Stacker here coming at you with a new video. Uh, Stacking is Life, part five. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, I'm going to go over some medical stuff. Uh, you know, uh, I, like I said, you guys know I'm a prepper, um, but uh, I'm sensible here. So um, let's talk about like medical supplies that you um, would or could need. Um, so, um, Something that I always have on me, always, is a tourniquet. This one here is a soft T tourniquet. SOF tactical tourniquet wide. Uh, this one and the cat T tourniquet are the only two tourniquets that, uh, in my opinion, are legit. Um, they're battlefield tested and there's no shenanigans about them. I mean, they're like a, the legit thing. Uh, if you get a uh, a severed limb or something like that one or two of these will stop your bleeding uh, there are a bunch of other tourniquets out there or tourniquets in quotations out there that um, that fall short um, the key is no windlass no tourniquet so if it does not have the thing to crank this guy it is not considered a tourniquet in my and many other professional people's opinions um, so this is a soft tee. I don't have a cat with me for this video, but, um, another thing to be aware of is that some people make fake ones. So if you buy these, they have serial number manufacturing date. This one was made March 7th of 2018. Um, it's got this logo on it. Uh, I also purchased this from a reputable source. These run about $27 to $30, somewhere in that range. If you find a deal where there's two of these and they're cheap, it's like two for $10.99 or, or $20, those are fake. Those are for Airsoft or some other BS. Um, these are $20, $27, these are $20, not $20, these are $27 to $30 each. That's their cost. Um, so I always have one of these on me. The other thing to have is the emergency bandage. This is a North American Rescue emergency bandage, a four inch. It's also known as an Israeli bandage. It has instructions on the back of it. These are like five bucks. Um, it's a pressure bandage. It has a claw on it that um, allows you to loop the um, bandage through. If you can see on here, I think it shows it. Yeah, so in this image six, it's got this plastic claw and you you can take the bandage through there and then double it back on itself. It provides some pressure on top of the wound. Um, these sometimes will stop the bleeding all by themselves. So these are amazing to have. Um, another thing that's good to have is some compressed gauze. Um, this can be used to pack or just to wrap or cover something. So these are good and they're cheap too. These are like two or three bucks. Um, and it's four and a half inch by four. 4.1 yards stretched six ply cotton. I believe it's non woven, but anyway, latex free and made in the US. Um, there's a company called H and H that makes bandages like this. Uh, the problem with those is they're made or sterilized in China. Um, and China in the past has not been so friendly to us. And so they've put uh, harmful stuff in the bandage that did not get killed by the sterilization process and then uh, some people ended up getting very sick or maybe even dying so uh, made in America um, not H&H &H is the way to go on these and they're cheap and they're competitively priced this is cool because it's super small um, some other bandages that are similar in size uh, take up a little bit more space this is four inch by 4.1 yards and you can see like this would be easier to pack. You can fold this up than this like big squishy thing. So there's that. Tourniquet, Israeli, and uh, gauze. These three things alone with maybe a pair of uh, non-latex gloves 
uh, would get you through almost any situation. The only thing it's not going to help you with is a um, like a punctured lung or something like that. For an issue like that, you need some kind of petroleum gauze um, dressing or chest seal. One goes on the front where the wound is, and one goes on the back where the exit is, if there is an exit wound. So I got a couple of those. Um, th this alone right here would get you through any traumatic situation. And you have to keep in mind, trauma is a surgical disease. The only thing that's going to help you if you have a trauma to your body is surgery. So stabilize and get them to the hospital. Um, it's not something that you're going to treat at your location, at your house or something like that. Like the only time you're going to put a tourniquet on a wound is like if there's nonstop arterial bleed or something like that and you can't get the bleeding to stop by packing it or putting something else on it. Um, another thing I didn't touch on was about tourniquets was there was big phobia about tourniquets um, and people losing limbs because the tourniquet was on um, for too long. Uh, if you live in the U.S. like I do, uh, or in some other advanced uh, location, you, you're not too far away from paramedics or medical help. I don't think we're farther than like 30 minutes maximum. That would be like so long uh, before an ambulance could get to you. Um, the tourniquets we're seeing being put on people's limbs in Iraq, Afghanistan, in combat situations, upwards of like 9, 10 hours, and they're still gaining... Um, full use of their limbs after, uh, after surgery, after medical treatment. So all of that phobia is um, needless now. Uh, we've moved on and our medical technology is way better than it used to be. So don't have to worry about that. If you were just going to get three things to help you to keep in your car, to, um, to be able to help somebody in a car crash or something like that, these, this is it right here. Israeli bandage compressed gauze and a tourniquet um, and multiples of these is, is also good um, you can add other stuff to it like you can throw in some some squishy gauze and stuff if you've got room a triangle bandage is good uh, maybe some trauma shears if you are gonna have to cut some clothes or something like that and then you know your first aid stuff um, you can get crazy uh, I happen to uh, get a bunch of stuff donated to me so I just threw these in this is my home pack Stuff that I keep at the house just in case we have a uh, traumatic thing. Like, I wouldn't expect anybody to have uh, an eye patch um, in their car, you know, to help somebody if they got in a car crash or something like that. But, you know, if you got room, you can do it. Um, another thing you could throw in there is maybe some different types of medical tape. Um, you never know when you might need some tape, and this might come in handy. Um, and different... Uh, sterile uh, pads or gauze you know these aren't bad these aren't bad to have so uh, my main thing that I wanted to get across though is uh, trauma uh, we touched on that if you're only going to get three things or four things you know a pair of scissors a tourniquet a good quality tourniquet an Israeli bandage and compressed gauze that will get you through almost any situation um, and obviously don't don't exclude uh, some gloves. You don't want to touch somebody. You never know what they have. But, you know, in this situation, we've been, uh, we've been in situations where you get blood on your hands. It's not a terrible thing as long as you don't have open wounds. Uh, but gloves are, it's always a good idea to glove up. Um, something else I don't have in here that I do recommend is a, um, a face mask for uh, CPR. Um, the the ones I'm talking about are called a lateral mask. I'll put a link in the description. But a lateral mask has a one-way valve in it. So if you're doing CPR on somebody and they end up vomiting or the person who's doing compressions um, pushes something up out of their stomach, which happens, uh, it won't get up in your face and your mouth. Um, so that's a good thing. This is Slow Stacker. Uh, I feel like I'm rambling, so I'm going to cut it off here. Uh, we've been about 9 minutes and 30 seconds. I appreciate you watching. Stacking is life. Stack some medical supplies, you guys. It's good stuff. Slow stacker, stacking it slow. Catch you on the next one.